I bought this 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour DCT almost five years ago and was that a good decision or should I have gone in a different direction? This video is sponsored by Cruise Man's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage. I'm out in the garage today. It's about 35 degrees outside. I've got a little heat going on in here. So I thought what I'd do is I'd kind of give you a five year review, almost five years, uh, of my impressions and overall thoughts about this Honda Goldwing Tour. This is a 2018 model DCT, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I bought it in March, actually March 1st of 2018. And I've put about 30,000 miles on the motorcycle since that time. Not huge mileage by any stretch. Many of you have 2018 Goldwings with many more miles than I do. But I thought what I would do is give you my impression why I bought this bike. Am I glad I bought it? Is it a bike that I would buy again? Is it a bike I would recommend? maybe for you, depending on what your needs and desires are. So I think if you're interested in a Honda Goldwing, maybe you're considering a Goldwing, I'm hoping I'll give you some valuable information in this video. I'm not going to, uh, you know, Honda doesn't sponsor this video. Uh, they're certainly not paying me to say great things about the Honda Goldwing. Uh, so this is purely my opinion. I'm gonna tell you the good, the bad, the ugly, what I'd really think about this bike good or bad. Let me take you back to 2018 and why I made the decision to buy this motorcycle. Obviously I knew the bike was coming out. They, you know, I had seen the pictures of it and read a little bit about it before it was released. And at that time, my YouTube channel was, was growing, but not, I wouldn't say it was exploding, but it was growing. And I, even though I did like what I saw in this new motorcycle, I think one of my primary reasons for buying the bike was it was a business decision. I felt like, you know, this is the direction Honda's going. Uh, if I'm going to continue a YouTube channel, I also had maintenance videos for the previous generation Goldwing. I felt like, you know, if I'm going to continue selling maintenance videos, I need to have the latest, the greatest, you know, Honda Goldwing so that I could continue that business strategy. So for me, there was part of it was a business decision. However, that said, I really was intrigued by this new styling. I had the fifth generation Goldwing. I had a 2012 when I purchased this or before I purchased, I sold it before I purchased this. And I had had a 2005 Goldwing. I'd had a 2007 Goldwing and a 2012. And between those three bikes, I put about 200,000 miles on those motorcycles. I was very familiar with them. Absolutely loved the bikes. Every motorcycle I had bought from Honda, a Goldwing, uh, was better than the previous in some way. They had made improvements all along the way. So I was very hopeful that this new platform uh, was going to exceed my expectations, which were pretty high. I, I liked the styling, first of all. That was one thing that really caught my eye was the modern, sleek styling of this motorcycle. I also liked the fact that it was a little bit lighter, a little bit slimmer, uh, a, a little bit sleeker, you might say. Uh, just, I, I, I was, even though I loved the previous Goldwing, it, it was a handful, you know, it was a handful, especially around town, great road bike, in some ways, maybe even a better long distance touring bike than this motorcycle. I liked the looks. I was attracted to this motorcycle. I understood why Honda uh, was trimming that down the bike and going this direction. I understood that their demographics, they needed to appeal to a younger audience. They needed to have something maybe a little bit sportier, a little more technology oriented. I think the Honda design team hit it out of the park. I just absolutely love the styling of this motorcycle. I think it's sort of timeless, at least for the next five years. I think it could be a great platform for this motorcycle. I 
really like the fact that they went with the all LED lighting. Uh, I think they do put out a nice light, a good amount of light, better than any motorcycle I've tested. And I've tested the Indians, I've ridden Harleys, I've ridden the big BMWs. Uh, many of you have seen my reviews, the Can-Am uh, Spider RT. Now I did get the DCT. I felt like it was important to have the DCT because I knew that was revolutionary. I felt like it was going to be a popular transmission. Again, I think this is one area where Honda really hit it out of the park engineering wise. That's what they're known for. I would say the strong suit of this motorcycle is in the styling and in the engineering. Uh, their engines have always been pretty bulletproof as well as their transmissions. It took me a couple of weeks to adapt to where I wasn't continually pulling, you know, pulling in the uh, phantom clutch lever. And then one day I realized, you know what? I'm never going back. I would never go back to a manual transmission. I love this DCT. It is so responsive. It's so elegantly designed, it's so smooth and quiet, and it, it just works very well. So I'm a fan of the DCT transmission. And if that's something that has kind of, you've been on the fence about a DCT, I would say go ride one and try it. The next thing I love about this motorcycle are the ride modes. Honda put in the Tour, the Eco mode, the Rain mode, the Sport mode. I don't ever use Sport mode. I pretty much stay in the Tour mode. And they do give you the ability to shift manually. And that comes in really handy in places like when you ride the Tail of the Dragon. I know when I first got on the Tail of the Dragon, I had the bike in Tour mode. And, you know, after the first couple of switchbacks, I realized real quick, no, this isn't going to work. You definitely want to use manual mode. Now, another thing that was kind of revolutionary on this motorcycle, especially for a Goldwing, was this wishbone suspension. Again, engineering plus for Honda. I think they did an excellent job. I find the suspension on this motorcycle to be superior to what it was on the previous generation Goldwing. I think the bike run, rides smoother. I think it feels more planted. And it was a great handling motorcycle, don't get me wrong, especially for a big motorcycle. But this motorcycle, I think, is a level ahead. And for me personally, the suspension is fine. Like I said, 185 pounds, six foot one, 33 inch inseam. 90% of the time, I ride by myself but I have done some touring with my girlfriend on the back, pulling a trailer. We've had no problems with the suspension. It just runs fine for us. Now, I have bottomed out a couple of times, uh, but I used to bottom out all the time on my previous Goldwing. It was just notorious for being undersprung. And in fact, on my 2007 Goldwing, I even took the bike, rode the bike to uh, Atlanta to I uh, can't remember the name of the town that Traction's in. <laughs> Sorry, Max. And uh, had Max uh, rebuild my front end uh, and the back, rear suspension, both suspension on that Goldwing. And it was not an in, in, in inexpensive proposition. It was rather expensive, but it was a huge difference. I mean, if, if you have a fifth generation Goldwing and you're not happy with the suspension, you definitely need to talk to Max at Traction Dynamics because it's well worth if you, especially if you ride aggressively. One of the things that Goldwing owners from the fifth generation had wanted for many, many years is an electric windscreen. And once again, Honda's engineers came up with a very elegant, a very usable solution, very well done. Now the windshield itself, uh, the stock OEM windshield on the Tour model was just a little bit too small for someone my size, for me personally. I ended up going with a F4 Customs windshield. I think for most people, especially if you're at six feet or under, you're gonna be fine with that Honda factory windscreen, but I love the F4 Customs. And another thing Honda did very well on is they made the windshield very, very easy to replace. You basically remove four bolts. It's just, it takes you less than 10 minutes to swap out the windshield. Another thing that Honda Goldwing owners complained about for many, many years and were hoping for in the next generation Goldwing, which we did get with this model, is integrated 
Bluetooth communications. On the downside, when we start talking about the technology package on this motorcycle, I think that's where we start talking about Honda's weaknesses. Th this is not their strong suit. Their strong suit is styling and engineering, durability, reliability. Their strong suit with this motorcycle is not technology. As far as the radio system, the navigation, that's kind of where it's, it shows its weaknesses. It's kind of where they, they ran out of steam, I guess you could say, when they were designing this bike. The Bluetooth is an old version of Bluetooth. They have not updated it. I don't even know if it can be updated, but it does work. And once you get connected, it works well. I love the fact that they did include Apple CarPlay. They later on did add Android Auto. So if you're an Android user, you can use that. I wish it had wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, but it does not. That Obviously, that requires the addition of Wi-Fi, but it's doable. They do it in cars. They do it in some other... I think they might do it in other motorcycles. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments down below if you know, is there a motorcycle out there that has wireless CarPlay? There may not be, but I can add a CarLink kit, little dongle adapter that gives me wireless car play for under a hundred dollars so if you it's this big so if you can do that surely honda could just build that into the motorcycle i mean it can't be that tough but nevertheless car play works i can add the aftermarket carling kit and i can get wireless car play and it's been working very reliable for me for quite some time now the navigation system is another weakness. I found, I discovered that the first day I rode the motorcycle back from Oklahoma. I played around with the navigation and it just was, not, it wasn't even as good as what was in the fifth generation Goldwing. In the previous Goldwing, Honda was using a Garmin based GPS. And for whatever reason, I suspect it was financial. Uh, they chose not to go with Garmin on this motorcycle, and they went with another company, which I think might have even been a subsidiary of Honda. They, and it, it acts more, feels more like something you would expect to see in a car rather than on a motorcycle. So I don't want to get into a long, drawn-out discussion on what I think are the weaknesses of Honda's navigation system. That's another topic for another video. I ended up buying an aftermarket Garmin to add to this bike just because I'm not very satisfied with the built-in navigation system. And I think it's a weakness. I think it's something that Honda could have done a better job on and hopefully it's something they'll improve in the future. One thing I do love about the Honda Goldwing is they do give you a very generous warranty. Now, they also offer an extended warranty. I think it may now offer up to five years. I know they offer four because I added four years of Honda's extended warranty to this motorcycle. Uh, but it comes with a three-year unlimited mileage warranty. However, the extended warranty does not cover the audio package, the audio and navigation system. That's a very expensive thing to replace should it fail. I wish Honda had included that audio navigation system in the extended warranty. Even if it was a little more expensive, I think a lot of people have been willing to pay it because that's a big risk. There have been some that have failed, but it is rare. So granted, it's a rare thing that you'd have to replace your audio package, navigation package in the bike. But uh, anyway, that's just one of the things I wish Honda had done. One of my frustrations with this motorcycle up until about maybe not a year ago was the size of the trunk. This is a 2018 model. You know, a lot of times I commute back and forth to get coffee or meet friends or whatever. And I always like to take my helmet off and put it in the trunk. I wear a modular helmet. HJC or Senna, whatever. And I was never able to get my modular helmet to fit in the trunk standing up. I always had to take off the Senna communicator, lay the helmet on its side to get the trunk lid to close. For those of you maybe don't own a Goldwing or you're shopping for a Goldwing, uh, in 2021, Honda, to their credit, did listen to their customers. Apparently, a lot of people out there 
were complaining about the small trunk. Honda did come out with a larger trunk or top box, whichever you prefer to call it. And they made some other modifications to the motorcycle as well, but that was the main thing, was the larger, more spacious trunk. And they did an excellent job with the design. I thought, you know what, I'll just buy the larger trunk because Honda does sell a trunk kit. Now it's expensive. It cost me maybe $2,500 uh, to buy the trunk kit and to, I did all the swap out here. If you paid a dealer to do it, that might cost you an extra five or $600. I also had to have the trunk painted to match my motorcycle. And if you were going to a painter to have that done, that probably cost you an extra, I don't know, 800 or 1,000. Let me know in the comments down below if you've had it done. I was lucky, I had a good friend who was a paint and body guy at the Lexus dealer. He managed the paint and body for many years and he hooked me up. I'll tell you what, it's one of the best things I did. It has relieved that frustration that every time I go somewhere, now I can fit my helmet in the trunk, no problem. It stands up, I don't have to take off any communicators. I can actually put two helmets in the trunk. So if a trunk size is important to you and you're, not, you're in the market for a Honda Goldwing, make sure you look at the 2021 and later because those are the models that have the larger trunk. Now, another thing that they did include in the electronics, even though I think the integration could be better, and that's the TPMS. On the older Goldwing, we did have a TPMS light that would go off if your tire pressure was low, but you still had to get off and check the tire. Yeah, I don't even think it told you which tire. You had to check both tires. On this motorcycle, it does show you the actual tire pressure, front and rear. However, it doesn't show you both of them at the same time. Come on, Honda. I mean, that's something they really should deal with. But the integrated TPMS that's built into the Goldwing, the 2018 and plus Goldwing, is very, very good. It's very accurate in, in my tests anyway. Now, it doesn't start registering your uh, tire pressure until I think you're going 16 miles an hour, and then it starts the readout on the dash. But you have to press a button to switch between the front tire and the rear tire to see the tire pressure. And that is irritating. There's plenty of space in this dash on the TFT screen if necessary to show both the front and the rear. So I wish Honda would address that in a future update of the Honda Goldwing. Another thing kind of back on the engineering with the engine design and everything is Honda did a very good job of improving the fuel efficiency of this motorcycle. And believe it or not, this is one of the few motorcycles I've ever ridden and tested that will run on 87 octane. And it runs just fine. I use 87 octane all the time. But this motorcycle will routinely get between, I'd say just in the around town, maybe a little bit of highway riding here. In the Dallas-Fort Worth area, this motorcycle, I get about 42 to 44 miles per gallon on the average. My previous Goldwing, it was somewhere more like 36 to 38 miles per gallon. They have improved the mileage and on long highway trips, especially if you're up in the mountains and higher altitudes, I've had over 50 miles per gallon on this motorcycle. And I know some of you routinely get more than 48 or 50 miles per gallon. That's pretty amazing. Uh, a big improvement in fuel efficiency. I know a lot of you out there complain about the fact that this has a smaller fuel tank than what we had on the previous Goldwing. This tank, I think, holds five and a half gallons. But the range is the same because the mileage is better. So this motorcycle should easily, unless you're just hot riding the bike, but if you're riding standard highway miles, 65, 70 miles an hour, you should be able to get 200 to 220 miles on a tank of gas, maybe even more. My riding style, I'm ready to get off after 150 miles anyway. I get gas, I take a drink of water, I stretch my legs. This bike fits my riding style. When it comes to things like mileage, fuel efficiency, it's just fine. And I love the fact, again, I love the fact that it will run on 87 octane. I tested two or three different touring bikes last year and all of them recommended premium fuel. 
Think of the cost over time, how much fuel you purchase for your motorcycle, the difference in cost between 87 octane and premium. And I think you'll see it is uh, noticeable. Another thing that Honda engineers did very well is the maintainability of this motorcycle. While it is a complex motorcycle, it is approachable, it is doable. You can do most, if not all, of the maintenance for this motorcycle by yourself. Now, you might need some guidance, and that's why I have my maintenance videos to help you out, to show you step-by-step -step how to do all the various things from oil changes to coolant uh, changes, flush and bleed your brakes, change out your air filter. Now, having a Honda dealer service the motorcycle can get pretty expensive depending on what you're having done. So the good thing about this motorcycle is it was so well engineered and so well designed that an owner with just any basic mechanical skills and my videos and some instruction can do all these things themselves. So I, I think that's a real tribute to Honda and to their engineer that they made this a user maintainable motorcycle. I think that's another plus that a lot of people don't talk about. Another area when we talk about electronics and where Honda maybe missed the mark just a little bit, and this is kind of a good news, bad news story. It's got this beautiful seven inch TFT screen, full color screen. When you pull up Apple CarPlay, it's beautiful. It has a nice color screen, but they don't utilize it. I'll give you a comparison. The Indian Pursuit that I reviewed last year, they did an, a beautiful job, but it's so well designed and it has so many different options and so many features. The Honda Goldwing has the screen, they just didn't do the programming to give you the ability to change the colors, the ability to customize the screen with different widgets. It should have all of that built in. You should be able to have a digital speedometer on the screen. You should be able to have, like I said, your TPMS where you see the front and rear tire at the same time. It looks beautiful with Apple CarPlay, but that's really it. Other than that, it's just a blue screen with a, a radio number on it. You know, it's pretty kind of boring. Once again, talking about engineering, I'm going to go back to, you know, patting Honda on the back. They did an excellent job with the brakes on this motorcycle. Great ABS. I love the fact that it has... I call it traction control. That's not what Honda calls it, but it's, it is a form of traction control. And they also have a very, very well-designed hill start assist feature. And the last thing I'll mention, even though I've kind of slammed Honda a little bit for their electronics, one thing Honda did do with this motorcycle and the previous Goldwing as well, is they've given it the uh, hand controls and the dash controls are backlit. So at night, you can very easily see the buttons and the knobs and the switches. I was really shocked when I saw the top of the line BMW touring bike and it didn't have backlit hand controls. Same thing for the Indian. I was surprised. I was so used to it on the Goldwing. You don't realize how you miss it until you don't have it. And uh, the whole design of the cockpit, the dash, is very well conceived. All the information is very well laid out. I actually like the analog speedometer and tachometer, and it's just very, very well organized and laid out. The whole human interface from that perspective is very good. The one thing I'm not crazy about, and we've talked about this before in other videos, and that is the location of the horn button. I, the horn button is not intuitively located where my thumb rests. Uh, one thing that would help is if they'd made the horn button a little bit longer so it sticks out more, it's easier to find with your glove because it's very easy to hit the, the little Siri talk button <laughs> or a turn signal button instead of the horn button. So it's a muscle memory thing, but I've been riding this bike almost five years and I still have not trained myself to f where my thumb falls onto that horn button when I need it. Other than that, though, those are these are nits I'm really picking now. I mean, I'm really having to nitpick to find fault with this motorcycle because overall, I love the bike. Would I buy it again? Yes. Would I buy another Honda Goldwing this platform? Absolutely. 
it fits my riding style. It's a great commuter bike. It's a great long distance touring bike. One other slight weakness of the motorcycle is the seat. The seat could be more comfortable, uh, but that's not unique to a Honda Goldwing. There's a lot of aftermarket seat companies out there and they make seats for multiple brands of motorcycles. It's not just Honda Goldwing. So a lot of people must be complaining about the seats on their other motorcycles too. I had mine rebuilt uh, by a company called Wingsoft and I find it is fine for my purposes, does a great job and reasonably priced. Uh, the handling, the performance, this thing's got more power than I will ever use. It just a uh, six cylinder engine, super smooth, super quiet on the highway, very comfortable bike. So if you're in the market for a touring bike and you're considering a Honda Goldwing, I'm a fan. Uh, what can I say? big fan of this motorcycle. So if you have any questions about this motorcycle, please put it in the comments down below. Uh, I try to read every comment I can, and I would ask as a favor that if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, please give it a thumbs up. Doesn't take but just a second to do that. Doesn't cost anything, but it really does help my YouTube rankings, and uh, I can use all the help I can get. Okay, so thanks for joining me today. I hope you liked the video. And remember what I always say, ride often, but ride safe.